Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode from Gwiglet. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you as always for viewing and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Today we'll be looking at Macbeth and I'll be doing a live go through of a paper. I've not looked at this paper in a long time so the questions will be new to me to give you the full experience as it would be within an exam context. Now obviously exams aren't going ahead necessarily this year as they are normally. However, you may still have assessments in class and this will be really useful just to see the process as I do it live of the paper itself. So as you'll see, I've got the Macbeth test timer up, also got a blank document up here and I've also got the examination paper itself to hand. So you can follow along and even have a practice if you wanted to. Just a reminder, obviously we are only doing Macbeth on the Educas examination board. So always remember it's just Macbeth in the paper. It's a really important way through it. I've had students in the past think you have to do every Shakespeare play um, and that is a surefire way for failing. So make sure you don't do that. On the left, I'll be typing my response live as I go. And on the right, I'll be highlighting and annotating the examination paper as you see it. So have you got any questions about the exams? Please leave a comment below. I'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget to follow us on all the usual channels as well, TikTok, Instagram, and on Twitter. So on the left-hand side, I'll start writing my response pretty shortly, but I'm gonna give you a live experience as I mentioned before, and I'm very conscious that I'm typing this rather than handwriting. So the timings I appreciate will be probably a little lighter than they would be if I were to handwrite them. So let's start the timer and let's begin. Remember you have one hour on Macbeth, two questions, 40 marks in total. The first question is an analysis one and the second one is a broader, wider question. So at this point, I would make sure you have highlighters to hand, uh, pen and pencil and ruler, your obvious items. Highlighter is an absolute godsend. I can't recommend having them enough. So without further ado, we'll start any second now. And let's begin the paper. So just going to fire up the examination paper and my Word document as well. So we've got them simultaneously so we can go between, as I'd recommend that you do, in the context of any assessment or examination. Okay, so let's find the questions. And as I always say, don't forget, it is just Macbeth, just two questions. Okay, it seems so obvious and yet I have seen people mistake that before. Okay, so our two questions we've got uh, the first question is our extract one, 15 marks. So we will write slightly less than we would do on the second question. So read the extract, just gonna highlight that as I would do an exam, read the extract. Look at how Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, okay, speak and behave here. So we're looking at the way they speak, way they behave. How do you think an audience might respond to this part of the play, okay? Refer closely to details from the extract. So we've got to mention the audience, but also close analysis of various specific parts of the extract to support our answer. Now I'm just going to focus solely on this first question for now, make sure we've got that in hand. The second one we'll have time to come back to. I don't want to overload myself with too much information in detail. So what we have in front of us is an extract from Act 1, Scene 7. It's a fairly short extract. It's a little conversation between Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. Now, the important part with this extract is to make sure that you know where it is in the play. So knowing the play is so important. Now, it, Macbeth begins by saying, prithee peace. So he's obviously got this sense of frustration. Lady Macbeth has been almost badgering him a bit. It says, I dare do all that may become a man. So what I'm going to really think about here is, you know, this idea of manliness, the aspect of power, very, very important in itself. Now I may highlight more than we need, but that's that's fine in and of itself, okay? It's better to be able to garner a lot of resources only to use fewer, okay? So, really important part. Now we go to Lady Macbeth. What, boss, uh, what beast, sorry, was then made you break this enterprise to me? When you does do it, then you were a man. Okay, so I think that's a really important quote to have. When you does do it, then you are a man. Again, she's talking about manliness. When you does do it, there's a pronoun you. I could com I could uh, comment upon that. Then this idea of them saying uh, how she says how his fear does unmake him. It's an important point. And then we've got that obvious gruesome quote there from her about I would while I was smiling in my face, pluck my nipple from his boneless gums and dash the brains out. So there's something we can comment on there. 
Okay, now Macbeth then says, if we should fail, there's this interesting little use of pronouns here. If we should fail, screw your courage to the sticking place. How he says we, and Lady Macbeth says your. So this idea of a different, of different perspective on responsibility between the two of them, I think is quite telling between two characters. So I've got a nice range already, but I want to make sure that I uh, have whole coverage. I want to make sure that I am covering enough. Um, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? Spongy officers, so this idea of um, manipulation and plotting. And then Macbeth finishes with bring forth men, children only. Thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Okay, what a range I have there already. I will freely admit I may well not use all of them. Uh, how am I doing for time? So I've just got, I've just used under five minutes, so we're doing okay there. Plenty to go with. So I will start, as I would do always, um, using the words from the question where possible but also tracking from top to bottom. That's really, really important within what I do. So I've got to use the words, you know, at the start, the extract, later on towards the end. So let's begin. So the extract provided reveals to the audience, I think that's important because it's a play, so it's always about the audience, the scheming, plotting nature of both Macbeth and, excuse me, and Lady Macbeth. I'm going to try and provide a little introduction here, a little overview, just to pinpoint where it is within the play. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's a nice little element of finesse you can put within your response. While at the same time demonstrating how Lady Macbeth is so easily able to bend uh, Macbeth's will okay, to her own think about this to her own to her own desires okay through the power of persuasion so I'm going to provide this as a little overview uh, just to help pinpoint whereabouts we are in the play but also to demonstrate my wider holistic understanding of the extract itself so let's begin with the actual analysis itself so as always I'd always make sure I begin with a phrase like at the start of the extract. So we're going with the quote, pretty piece. Now, what can I do with this quote, pretty piece? I dare do all that may become a man. That's the quote we're going to hone in on. That's the quote we're going to focus on. So at the start of the extract, the audience would notice how Macbeth begins, uh, right, a little typo there, but again, I'll type quick when I write, I appreciate that begins with then I put the quote in pretty piece I dare do all that may become a man you don't need to do anything but analyze this extract that's what's really important about this point okay so I dare do all that may become a man now we break this down so I then go, firstly, the command of pretty piece refer, infers to the audience. It's good to just say that um, sometimes have a variation of the language where possible. And I'll then comment on how Macbeth is becoming frustrated with Lady Macbeth's comments towards him. However, the phrase of I dare do all, because I've got quite a long quote, so I can make at least a couple of points from this. I dare do all, become a man. Um, in particularly the use of the word, and, or as you can change this to the noun man, okay, going a little further, evaluating a little more, demonstrates how Lady Macbeth's comments um, I'm just going to change that. I can probably use a better word. So rather than that, we'll go Lady Macbeth's mockery of his masculinity has had an affect on the Thane of Cawdor. Another way of referring to him. I think it's important to have a range of ways to describe the characters if you're able to. It just gives that little bit of variety that is quite necessary and needed. Had an affect on the name of Cordor. So I've, I've already taken the quote, I've broken it down twice, more than necessary. I refer to the audience, okay, and I'm also tracking. Now I make sure I continue my tracking aspect in the next paragraph as it begins. As the extract continues, we see how Lady Macbeth continues this. 
breaking down of Macbeth's ego and fragile masculinity with great effect. But I'd probably, yeah, with subsequent great effect. Okay, so it was something we'll come back to later because obviously it's, it's not just at this point it works. But then I continue going through the actual piece and I'm always keen to embed quotes. So I'll say, Lady Macbeth is heard to say, when you first do it, then you were a man. Okay, I really, really try and avoid using this is shown in the quote. It's just a bit, a bit basic, if I'm honest. Breaking it down, say the phrase, then you were a man. Okay, so we're actually getting a little bit more out. We're just, just prizing out some of the keywords and phrases. Reveals to the audience how Lady Macbeth think about what you here insists on connection connecting um, Macbeth's masculinity um, and ego to the deed of regicide obviously the murder of King Duncan important point to mention there so right where we take this point from here so we could um, develop a little further and that nothing less will convince Lady Macbeth will convince her of his manliness. Now, I want to break if we've got a little bit more. Here I can say about the later comment by her on how Macbeth, um, Macbeth's fretting and indecision uh, does unmake you. Uh, another little important quote there, and I've got to put in square brackets Macbeth, because obviously it's you being Macbeth, referring to Macbeth, so we've got that absolutely grammatically correct. Uh, just so we've got that all tied up, um, that will absolutely be appreciated when it's said. Further reinforces um, the, well, we could say Macbeth, but I've already used Macbeth. Uh, further reinforces, reinforces Lady Macbeth, sorry, his insistence on uh, picking at her husband's, mm, what we have here, insists on picking at her husband's uh, weaknesses. Weaknesses, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've got a couple of really thorough um, paragraphs now, and we're going to continue. And I'm going to track again. So we say later on in the extract, we notice um, a clear shift in uh, responsibility and about this one, power. Yes, power in the way uh, Lady Macbeth, sorry, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth behave towards one another. So I've got that constant sense of track and I've got that constant sense of quotes that I then break down. So where will we go from this? We will go with, let's say Macbeth is quoted as saying, if we should fail, obviously that question there, um, with the pronoun, remember pronouns, words like us, our, I, you, we, uh, the pronoun we insinuating to the audience, again remember it's always a play, so it's an important way to do this. Insinuating to the audience how Macbeth feels that this is a joint effort uh, between them. Now, Lady Macbeth's response to this is screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. Now, will I take the whole quote? Do I need the whole quote? I'll, I'll put it for now because we could possibly come back to that as well. Um, it's a little longer than I'd like, but ultimately it's got everything we need and I could possibly alter it later if I feel the need to. So, as always, we've got the quote and it's all well and good having a quote, but the thing that students don't do enough is break down the quote itself. Notice the shift in pronoun to your courage, uh, that idea of having a responsibility on Macbeth now, isn't there? your courage not our courage so it's just solely on his shoulders subtly hints subtly hints subtly demonstrates uh, how lady macbeth is uh, or lady macbeth is uh, placing the onus of responsibility onto her husband um is responsibility onto her husband again this is the beauty of doing it live is i can show you with my thought process responsibility onto her husband veiling this in a command the idea of screwing your courage screw your courage in it. Um, but then I can that being said let's just go back and see how we can possibly phrase that slightly differently I don't mind that but there could be a different way around this we could have a different point how am I doing for time 
Okay, we're doing plenty well, uh, um, very well in fact, uh, 47 minutes, we'd really be looking at 45 to 40 though, I know I'm typing so it's not an authentic, as authentic as could be here is it? Um, I'll leave that there uh, because I think I've already mentioned the, fair, uh, the point in enough detail. So, towards the extract's culmination, I'm now rounding off this question, the 15 marker it's extract question, towards the extract's culmination, um, I'm going to mention how we notice, or rather we notice how, Lady Mac, uh, let's think about this, Lady Macbeth's, yeah, yeah, we'll go with that and we'll go, okay, so what's, uh, Lady Macbeth's words of manipulation, okay, because we we're, we're focusing on that last bit about bring forth men, children only at this point, and Naya daunted metal. So there's a there's a quite a substantial amount of quotations here, but it's important to make sure that we are are getting what we need out of this, but being accurate enough as well. You know, long lengthy quotes aren't going to help us all in, in a particularly uh, great detail. So Labeth words manipulation, including how she would be uh, willing to again put the quote in, embed the quote. Um, now I want to put in that little bit, I think that's really important to have the bit before it as well, um, this idea of dashing the brains out, because that's, that's really one of the most important quotes in the whole play. Showing how she'd be willing to have dashed the brains out of her own child, uh, I think that's enough. Could I do more with that? No, I'll, I'll continue with that. Dashed the brains out of her own child to secure the crown. Yeah, that's so uh, we've got a little nod back. Okay, It's not ideally how I'd like it, but you know, it's at least it's got that sense there in the character. Okay, let's see where we are now. Um, to secure the crown, I've had an immediate impact on uh, Macbeth. So we've got an, at least an acknowledgement of her in that response. So he, uh, let's think of this, he talks of how uh, Lady Macbeth would uh, bring forth men, children only. Again, notice it's an embedded quote. Um, it's, it's, it's done in such a way that the, the quote seamlessly transitions into the sentence and how her metal should compose nothing but males okay so we've got two quotes there a little bit more than ordinarily but we can do a lot with this and I'm going to acknowledge there are two separate references um, to masculinity and bring forth men children and nothing but males in men children and males Reiterate uh, to the audience, again, remember it's a play. Reiterate to the audience, let's say Macbeth's admiration, yeah, that works, admiration and awe for his wife, but also how he is now, how he is now convinced, okay, to take up the murderous act itself. Okay, how am I doing for time? Let's check. 44 minutes, about 15 minutes, having read it, having analysed it. Remember, so much of my analysis was easy because I know the play inside out. You have to know the play to really get that far. I think that's pretty much done. I think that's a really, really secure response. That would get at least a grade seven, possibly into a grade eight. It's got the quotes, it's got the reference to the audience, it's got a secure amount of tracking. It's got everything I kind of need there. Oh, now I'd cut at least five minutes off what I've done because I know I am not handwriting, I'm typing. So we're looking at roughly 38 to 35 minutes left. Notice also where I've just emboldened that just to show you exactly how I track. That is so, so, so vital. Um, that as well as breaking down the quotes, any student, in my experience of having taught cl close to probably over a thousand GCSE students now, if I really think about it, um, is and, and have experienced, uh, experienced that time and time again or been um, knowledgeable of that, they have that. Um, over and over again uh, can put a quote. There's no student can't put a quote, but it's about having that uh, breaking down what I call a digging of a quote. Okay, question two. Now, Macbeth's a play about violence. Okay, violence. So, violence is the theme. Okay, this is, personally, I think this is a quite, quite a nice one, really. Um, the whole play is steeped in violence. So, let's just get this highlighted so I've got that aware. Write about how Shakespeare presents violence at different points in Macbeth. Refer to characters and events. That should be arranged there. That it kind of applies to that. So now this is the question that I strongly encourage pupils to plan. So we've got to think violence, and I try and track my way through the play and think about the examples where violence occurs. I think that's really, really important there. So I go from the beginning. Um, I would think of Act One, Scene Two. 
I would think of how Macbeth is praised for the violence in defending the realm of Scotland for King Duncan. I think that's really, really important. Um, now, I'm probably going to bring more than you would be expected to bring. And I know this comes with a kind of bias of having taught this for over 10 years now. But there is a real range you can have for violence. Um, not just that, I think that's important because then that also shows Macbeth as a hero. Um, you've also got the idea of violence as being traumatic to Macbeth, that violence is something he does not, um, cannot comprehend, he is unable to comprehend. Um, will all great oceans Neptune, um, all great Neptune's oceans, sorry, uh, being the quote. And remember, you don't have the book in the exam, so paraphrase quotes are entirely fine. Then I go three, uh, three scene one, I think the way he, he, he enforces or issues the death of Banquo. Um, this idea of violence connected to amorality, the idea of having no morals whatsoever. Then the banquet scene, Act 3, Scene 4, between violence and revenge, the idea of blood will have blood, I think is really good. Um, then I would probably go leap a little further and combine Act 4, Scene 3 and Act 5, Scene 5, the difference in attitudes towards violence. In particular when um, Macduff learns of the death of his family, but also when Macbeth learns of Lady Macbeth taking her own life. I think they're both really important both there. So, what's really, really important here is to have a real sense of going across the whole piece and being able to pick those apart. And five eight, I would say violence and nobility. This idea of a kind of skewed bit nobility that Macbeth's end has that sense of him being a, a glorious leader. Um, well, even though he's a tyrant, that he wants to go out fighting. Possibly as a bonus point. I could mention how violence creates a kind of unresolved end. This idea of Malcolm being the king, but Fleance is also hypothesized and foreshadowed to be the king by the witches. So we kind of have an un, a, a, a very a very uncertain end um, in that. So. When I'm, when I'm starting, I like to use text author background link, as you'll see there. Um, I think that's a really good way of creating an introduction, and I would encourage an introduction for the 25 markers. So, I'm going to go violence as a theme in William Shakespeare's book Beth, so I've got a link to the question violence as a theme. I've got William Shakespeare, the author, the background there. Um, not yet, but I do have the text as well. So I've got three of the, t of, of the table um, points for introduction. Violence as a theme in William Shakespeare's Macbeth has myriad, that means lots of consequences for both the titular character, so the character whose name is lent to the title, so Macbeth, the titular character, a nice little phrase you can use, and others in the play. Now, while at the start of the play, violence is praised and rewarded, okay, there's an important little point to have there, we want to just kind of get an overarching idea. The theme also allows for characters to shed their morality and at the same time I would say it also allows them to uh, hold or it holds a mirror to other characters or other ca yeah other characters on their reactions towards loss I think it's an important point there to have what else could I add towards loss yeah let's carry on in the play's conclusion yeah, it is the consequences of violence. That's how I want to put it. The consequences of violence set in an era. And now I'm getting my background in. Set in an era where violence determined uh, rulers and conquer conquerors. Yeah, I think that works. Conquerors. The consequence of violence set in an era where violence determined rulers and conquerors uh, that leaves the ending of the play or the text slightly open-ended yeah that, 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 that's a nice sort of rounded way of, of beginning the piece itself so the methodology isn't going to be much different in this next part and I'm just going to um, talk through some of the processes I do for this I know I've probably got more than I need in terms of examples but again you to know the examples you've got to know the play so it's really important but I'll track as I did in the 15 marker question. At the start of the play, let's go with this. At the start of the play, Macbeth is praised for his... Let's think about this. Macbeth is praised for his violent actions. 
in defense of King Duncan's Scotland. Yeah. Um, I'm not spelling it. Okay. Um, violent action in defense of King Duncan in Scotland. So we got that idea there. The bloody captain. Okay, an easy, simple quote. Bloody man, rather. In the captain. It's probably a better way of phrasing it. Uh, he's quoted as saying how uh, Macbeth not only defeated Macdonald's rebel, but unseamed him from the nave to the chaps. And uh, fixed his head upon our battlements. That's a, that's a nice enough quote, it's a lengthy enough quote. And uh, let's go. Not only does this quote show to the audience how Macbeth, Macbeth is naturalized to violence and that he can unseen, notice I've picked that word out there, the verb that he can unseen a man and disembowel him. Uh, also wanna put about this, actually I'm gonna go back though, and, and decapitate him, fixing his head. Okay, so again, another embedded quote there, fixing his head on and then I could just use the ellipsis to chop that quote down. It's head upon battlements, so that still works. Um, still has the aspect there. Um, so not only does this quote, let's think about this. Not only does this quote show the audience how the flesh shows right. Battlements. Yeah, good. But in the captain referring to, uh, yeah, so I'm using another quote here. I know, remember the quotes don't have to be long. I've always encouraged the quote to be six to eight words in length as at most. But in the caption referring to Macbeth as brave, well, he deserves that name. Use of ellipsis again, only three dots, three dots only to short from that quote. That his otherwise brutal deeds are praised and rewarded, as later demonstrated in, uh, let's think about this, in Duncan pronouncing what he has, let's think about this, what he. Yeah, uh, Thane, uh, Thane of Cordor, remember the pre-existing Thane of Cordor, the traitorous Thane of Cordor. What he hath lost, a noble Macbeth hath won. Okay, all from the same scene, and all showing the same aspect. Now I'm going to continue with this same process, and I'm going to find the actual aspects that I need, I'm gonna try and break through it, and I keep going back to my plan. So I'll chop off the bits I need, strike through it, in this case, make them bold as I go. So, whilst also being aware of the time, and you're gonna see how I do this also um, as, as we go forwards. So, as the play continues, Macbeth's mentality towards violence changes from one of boldness to one of trauma, okay? Particularly when um, violent acts uh, let's think about this. Violent acts are switched to innocent characters. Okay. Now, when Macbeth returns uh, with the bloody daggers, mm, yeah, we can use that as a quote. Nice, easy quote. Okay. Uh, it may be paraphrased, but that's all still okay in the context of an exam. Bloody daggers to Lady Macbeth. Uh, he comments on... Uh, how will all great Neptune's oceans, let's think about this, will all great Neptune's oceans wash these hands clean? So there's the use, the use of the question again as well. Now, uh, the comment on cleanliness by uh, Macbeth is demonstration I would say of his inherent guilt at the violent act he has committed he has committed I should probably say that but also how his soul as well as his body is stained permanently I really want to get that distinction of you know washing the hands clean but also washing the morality clean as well Okay, and and the all again. Notice that ellipsis, three dots. Uh, 
um, pronouncing what he. Now let's go with this. Um, now I've got that there. I just want to check back through my points. That all Neptune's oceans cannot cleanse him from this act. Yeah, that's fine. So now on to the next point. Okay, we're, we're plowing through it. We're going to go quite a good length. I've got, I've got enough time on my hands. Now, however, as the play continues, Macbeth becomes attuned to a moral kind of violent uh, deeds. Uh, it's important to put. Now, we're, we're moving into the midway point of the play, really, at, at this point. So, motivated by an amoral wife and Lady Macbeth, I think it's important to bring her in as well, because she's one who, who demonstrates violence as well. An amoral uh, wife in Lady Macbeth who would commit infanticide. So it's a, a little nod to the quote we saw in Act 1, Scene 7 in the 15 marker question. But I'm not spending too much time on that. Uh, Lady Macbeth is seen to hire, uh, hire murderers. Uh, to Sorry, Macbeth is seen to hire murderers to not only kill Banquo, but his son. I think that's uh, his young son. I really want to emphasise that idea of innocence too. So, when a Macbeth is quoted, mm, it seems too similar to what I've had before, when Macbeth declares how, yeah, so we can still embed the quote, I require a clearness in the work, and I'm going to use an ellipsis because I know this bit's not necessarily clear with it, leave no rubs nor botches in the work. I think that's important. Uh, let's think about this. Leave no rubs nor botches. He is using euphemistic language okay the idea of not not talking about it in a direct manner but rather talking about it uh around uh, skirting the issue you using euphemistic language in phrases like clearness no rubs and botches to subtly skirt the fact he is willing to have a child uh, murdered in order to claim in order to claim, in order to secure, yes, that worked, in order to secure his crown. Um, further demonstrating to the audience how violence, let's think about this, how violence is at this point in the play. Again, using key terms, so violence at that point, really important. Um, at this point play, hand in hand with morality, goes well. Now, checking the time, really I'm down to 20 minutes and I'm really thinking about this. I wouldn't say, oh, 29 is flattering considering I'm typing, so I think that's that's got to be remembered. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, so I've done that point. I'm now about halfway. I'm actually going, doing okay for time, but again, this all comes back to the point that I know the text. I know the text well, and it's just knowing the text well that will boost your performance. So, okay, now the, let's think about this. The presence of violence... Think about how we go with this. The presence of violence changes slightly as the play continues. So I'm acknowledging that violence isn't always the same thing in the text. It can be slightly different, can be quite, quite varying, actually. Now, when Macbeth holds his infamous banquet, let's think about this. Uh, Macbeth's infamous banquet, which is then ruined by the spectre. Yeah, that will work. The Spectre of Banquo. Um, that's about... Okay, right. Macbeth. Okay, just need to alter that. Macbeth is quo quoted. Yeah, Macbeth is quoted as saying, it will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. So I, I know that quote. It may not be entirely accurate, but it's certainly enough to, to secure what you need. We'll have blood, they say, blah, 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 yeah, that works, okay. So the repeated use of the noun blood, um, what can we say here? Well, the repeated use of the noun blood not only demonstrates to the audience the fact that, no, I can change that, say how Macbeth is, Macbeth is, Macbeth recognises, uh, take the Z out, that's an Americanism, recognises the, uh, let's think about this, recognises the, 
recognises the depth of his actions, but also um, also how he feels. How he feels, yeah, doomed to be revenged. The fact that he's killed so many people, so in turn he believes it will be his turn as well. Doomed to be revenged for the many evil deeds um, he's committed. Uh, let's think about that. That his reign is is entirely based upon uh, bloodshed. Yeah, so we've got the idea of bloodshed and tyranny. The idea of how violence always comes back to him in this piece. Violence is always a part of his life, whether he likes it or not. Okay, right. Now, what does, however... Um, no, I can, I can do better than that. What mm, What is, however, uh, interesting... Now I'm getting on to the idea of the Macduff... Macbeth dynamic, the kind of the kind of contrast between the two. What is, however, interesting about the theme of violence in Macbeth is how different characters respond to the sort of consequences. Yeah, I'd say consequences of violence. Now, for example, uh, when Macduff learns that his entire family. Uh, has been murdered by Macbeth's forces. Okay, he comments on how, and we're going to put the quote in. I will act, but I must grieve as a man. Now, again, another paraphrased quote, but it's it's close to the truth and the reality of it. I know it is, and it would be awarded in turn with the verb grieve, demonstrating to the audience how. Um, let's think about this. We will demonstrate to the audience how. Demonstrating to the audience how. Okay, okay, let's go with this. With the verb grieve, demonstrating to the audience how he has to allow his uh, emotions. That would work well. How to allow his emotions to come first before bloodshed and revenge. So we've got that idea of the specific word there. Um, and, and, and an evaluation of that. His reaction to violence and loss is far more humane than that of Macbeth. So again, the violence from the quote, from the question. Um, Macbeth's later on in the play. Now, when the... Let's think about this. When the... I want to, I want to think about the way I phrase this. And I don't want to be too similar to what I've said with Macduff. So when Macbeth learns of Lady Macbeth's suicide. In the final act. Now, it's important here to mention as well, keep mentioning the audience, keep mentioning that idea of violence and the presentation of violence. And we, we've got enough different points going on so far, so it's going well. It is going well. We just need to make sure we've got a little bit further to go. Um, learns of Lady Macbeth's suicide and final act. He comments on how she should have, quote, she should have died hereafter. Please, I can't stress how important those quote marks are, by the way. The use of the word hereafter, now there's two meanings to this. Now, can imply um, that either, okay, either she would die anyway, or instead that she should have uh, lived for a long, uh, a longer span of time. I think both are important and valuable. Either way, uh, what what's important about this is this sentiment uh, combined. Let's think about this. This sentiment combined with the cold, impersonal pronoun. Now, that, notice I'm registering that kind of tone and mood there. Cold impersonal pronoun of she um, reveals to the audience uh, Macbeth's. Now, what does it reveal to the audience? She reveals to the audience Macbeth's apathetic. Yes. So I've already said sort of um, I've said a couple of words like cold and impersonal. Don't use them again. Apathetic, indifferent feeling uh, towards violence and it and loss. When it concerns those close to him, closest to him, yeah, let's go with that closest to him. So we've got a really good range coming through here, and we're very nearly at the end of this play now. Very nearly at the end of the overall structure of it. Um, I just need to make sure I just round this up nicely. Again, that's flattering, really, in terms of timing. I'm really closer to something reaching probably 15 minutes, I'd say, if this was handwritten. Um, I think that's the big difference in timing. Typing compared to handwriting makes a 
significant difference there. So I want to just get those last few points mentioned, those last couple of points that I've already mentioned down, making sure that we are really tying up all those loose ends. So we've done that one, so I'm checking that off, I'm checking my plan off now, we're up to the last one and a bit really, violence and mobility, Macbeth's end. If I have time, could mention about Malcolm and Cleance and the kind of um, the unsettled ending, the open ending of, of the play itself. So, um, right, let's go with this then. So at the end of the play, again, notice I'm tracking once again. Uh, Macbeth, let's think about this. Macbeth directly connects violence with his uh, determination to hold on to being king of, excuse me, king of Scotland. Okay, getting tripped up on the typing there a bit. Uh, okay, right, so end of play, Beth directly connects violence with Dermot's shoulder and thinks it's okay. Right, so now he realises how um, they, the witches, okay, so if the, the person isn't referred, it's good to put like square brackets in. Or it realises how they, the witches, have tied me bare like to a stake. I think it's the stake or a stake, but again, it's semantics, it's very small bits, it really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, yet he must fight the course. Important point there, he must fight the course. So, paraphrase quotes again, but they're, they're all entirely legitimate. It just comes from reading and watching the play. That he, uh, demonstrating that he has to continue and ensure... Um, wait, hold on a bit. That he has to continue... Let's think about this. He has to continue to fight, okay, as he always has, and, and go out... Um, with a flourish? No, go out as a, as a noble warrior. Um, when he... When he is already considered uh, a quote butcher by Malcolm, that's Malcolm's last reference to him in Act Five, scene uh, the very very final scene of Act Five, rather. Now Macbeth's final lines. It's good to know. I always recommend know the first lines and the last lines. Macbeth's final lines of "Cursed be he that cries, hold enough." Good little important quote here. Um, "Cursed be he, hold enough." Showcase how uh, the character's entire mindset is focused, I'd say, yeah, absolutely focused on violence and fighting to the brutal, bitter end. Uh, till the flesh, again, another quote I really like from this play, till the flesh be hacked from my bones. Okay, there's so many quotes going on throughout here, um, and they all relate to violence. They're all pertinent, they're all uh, reasonable and useful. So, so good, good choice. Yeah, okay, right timing. Again, I would really say closer to 10 minutes. If this was handwritten, I couldn't process it as quick as I do when I'm typed. So again, it is. I really want to stress that. It, there, we're on time. We're doing well. We are very much um, in the right zone. So, but brutal then until flesh be hacked from my bones. Okay, right, doing well with that. Doing, let's see where we can go. Okay, as well as this, the I'm going to put that little bit in, I think, about Malcolm and Fleance. I think I have enough time think I've got enough places to go. Right, as well as this, the fact that Malcolm is, yeah, as well as this, the fact that Malcolm is made King of Scotland at the play's conclusion, um, while Fleance still lives and has a rightful claim to the throne. I think that's important. It's important to get that sort of open ending that's often ignored. Demonstrates how acts committed in the name of uh, violence, leave the play to be open-ended. Uh, yeah, definitely open-ended uh, in its conclusion. So I think I've largely tied that up now. I think I've largely got all the points I really need in there. Now, I have a real kind of mixed relationship with conclusions. People always think you need one. Often in a time conditions, you probably wouldn't get time to provide one. However, I'm in a place where I can so at least I'll show you how you could do one should you wish to, okay? Yeah, I'd be closer to probably seven minutes, seven and a half minutes, really, if we're, we're typing this. Um, you know, chopping off a, a, a liberal portion of time just so I can show that. So let's see. See where we go with this. So to conclude, let's think about this. To conclude, the aspect of violence in Macbeth. Yeah, that works. To conclude, the aspect of violence in Macbeth shifts um, in its importance and resonance 
throughout the play, okay? While violence is praised at the start, it is condemned at the end. So I'm going to show a sort of wide portrayal in the conclusion, so I'm covering the entire play as I have throughout the essay itself. And while some characters, okay, are shown to be more human and empathetic through the consequences, yeah, that will work, through the consequences of violence, um, others are more, uh, what can we say here, of consequence of violence, others are more inhuman, like Macbeth, and indifferent. Violence also uh, serves to create a, let's think about this, conflict, yeah, violence serves to create a conflict, uh, not only at the start of the play in the uh, Civil War on Duncan, Scotland, okay, but also, let's think about, we can just tie this last bit up, but also an unresolved conclusion in the, unresolved conclusion in the, just having a little bit of a lapse here, unresolved conclusion in the Malcolm Fleance uh, dynamic of the play. All right, I think I'm I'm quite happy with how that's been tied up. Um, that would again a secure response. That's a, that's you're looking grade seven, grade eight wise. Plenty of time there still to go. Even if we take ten minutes off, we're still at five minutes remaining. And so much of it comes from knowing the play. Know the play. Have quotes, short quotes that you can break apart and track. Tracking is so important within your educast exam board, and I can't stress that enough. You really want to make sure you do that. So thank you for joining me today. Hope that's been useful, and as always, give this video a thumbs up. It's hugely appreciated, and don't forget to follow us on all the different platforms, okay? Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube, of course. It's really, really useful and really valued. So, until next time, take care, all the very best, and bye-bye.